Hello everyone and welcome to Movies in a Nutshell, where we talk about movies in a quick way so you can get on with your life. I am your host, Detective Artemis, and today our movie is... No. Sorry guys, but there will be no Artie today. In the next few weeks, Artie's gonna be going on paternity leave. That's right, just like you thought. That wasn't just a gut he was carrying around. Might be wrong about that. I think his girlfriend is the one that's pregnant, not him. I'm not very good with details like that. Either way, he won't be uploading as much as before due to being sleep deprived from a crying baby. Lucky for you, he's the only one that's gonna be dealing with a crying baby. Cause he's such a gentleman, he will never take a crying infant to the movie theaters. Well, for the time being, you're gonna have to put up with me. I'm Journey, and you might have seen me before on Critic vs. Critic. If not, that's cool. I'm Ben Affleck to Art's Matt Damon. I sit back and take all the credit. Thanks, Art. So last week, I went to go watch a movie that I waited for years for I didn't think it was gonna happen I, I thought they just completely forgot about it 14 years of being left on the side of a cliff hanging because of the cliffhanger that happened 14 years ago you get my point so I'm told I'm supposed to drop a spoiler warning here it is look we all know that spoiler free reviews are kind of boring and I don't do boring. So if you haven't watched the movie yet, save this video on your watch list. Go hit up that theater, cause we need to talk about this shit. Go. Mom's new job. It's time to make some wrong things right. It's been 14 years, 14 years. That's one year longer than Finding Dory. Damn, Pixar, you really know how to keep a guy waiting for that phone call back. 14 years since we were introduced to this Disney superhero world. And 14 years of me wondering what happened to the Underminer. Did they stop him? And they didn't keep me waiting. The movie starts off with a battle against the Underminer. The last scene of the first movie was actually the first scene of the sequel. I love that shit. And the battle was dope. Until... Shit. I don't know. All that teamwork they built during the first movie, it went out the window. It was a complete shit show. They did end up stopping the big drill, although after it caused a buttload of damage. On top of that, the Underminer got away with all the money. He's probably in Mexico with some hookers by now. Am I not allowed to talk about hookers? Since the last sequel, nothing has really changed in society. Heroes are still illegal. And after this event, it, it only makes sense why. And you know what? The government got tired of backing up all these retired heroes. They straight up said, we're done paying for your damages. No more relocation. You're completely on your own. Stop disobeying us or you're going to jail. Kind of sounds like my parents when I turned 18. But not all is lost. An eccentric, rich guy reaches out to them after the event with an offer. Hey supers, I love you. My dad loved you. I'm rich. Want to do some illegal stuff? Sounds like a good plan, right? Hell yeah, it does. Yet, the offer was only for Elastigirl. Man, has she sparked this milf obsession inside of me that I was never aware of. Woo! After some hesitation and talking to her husband, she decides to take the job. Even though Mr. Incredible wasn't too thrilled about it. Now, I feel like a lot of this story was focused on Elastigirl. She became the only hero that was active fighting crime. She became this symbol again. This strong female hero that was experienced, super independent, and it showed. You could see her easily falling right back into the groove of being that independent fighter that can take on any situation and do it in the most efficient way possible. Seriously, she was so analytical. You can see her before even acting, she's thinking about every single possible way of being able to resolve the problem. And then she picks the best one and initiates it. And it always ends up great and in her favor. A lot of the heroes I've seen in this movie don't do that, especially Mr. Incredible, who thinks using brute strength and force is the only way to settle a problem. 
A great example of how amazing Elastigirl is, is my favorite scene, which is the bike scene. The one where she, her first mission, where she's trying to chase down the train. You completely see everything. Her riding the bike, chasing the train, while in contact and communication, trying to figure out if there's other ways of situating it before she has to jump in and use her powers. It was so cool. The way she was using her powers and the bike, it was like, it's like watching Spider-Man web swing, but at the same time on a bike. And at the end of it all, it, she completely nails it. Nobody gets hurt, no damage whatsoever, and everything is great. But even though she was in this high of being a hero again, she did not forget that she was a mother. She was ready to drop everything if her kids needed her. But the only way for her to continue being a hero was for Mr. Incredible to get over his ego and actually be a parent. Which in my opinion, I think being a good parent is a lot harder than being a hero. Now I think it's way too much of a coincidence that on the first day Elastigirl is back, something goes horribly wrong. I mean, come on. We all saw that shit coming a mile away. And guessing the identity of the villain was way too easy. And I think even the writers knew that it was going to be too easy. So they tried to throw us off by having two siblings. And you know, you almost got me there. But once you hear both of them talk about their father and how he passed away and how they felt about it, it was obvious. Although you really had to pay attention though. A lot of people just looked right over it. So you hear the guy talk about how much his dad believed in the heroes and how much he believes in those same heroes and how much he wished that the supers are still around when his dad was killed. While the girl on the other hand sounded super bitter and wished her parents had common sense to run into the panic room instead of sitting around waiting for supers. Yep, I'll trust the nerd any day over the chick with meth eyes. Seriously. She looked like she was on meth since the beginning of the movie. Come on, we've all seen Breaking Bad. Now, I love that the villain of this movie actually used mind control. I mean, mind control is probably the most cliche superhero plot there is, but for a good reason. Because this cliche gives you hero on hero fights. Even the main characters fought each other. Hell, we had spousal abuse. God, I love chaos. This is a kid's movie. So obviously, the kids had to save the day. And after breaking the mind control, they get the adults to help them take down the rich, crazy meth head. And then, hey, heroes become legal again. That pretty much sums up the whole plot of the movie. Now, there was a lot of character development in this movie. Elastigirl becomes the female superhero role model that she deserved to be. Mr. Incredible gets over his ego a little bit and learns how to be a father. And Violet goes through menstruation. You know that was basically what was going on. And Jack-Jack, Jack-Jack. Jack Jack steals the show with all of his powers and cuteness. He was so adorable. He was the best thing about this movie. We all wanted more Jack Jack after the first one and after his short. We wanted Jack Jack and we got Jack Jack. That kid is going to grow up to be the strongest hero in history. He's going to be what Peter Petrelli should have been in Heroes. Yeah. I love Jack-Jack. That kid is hilarious. The funniest part of the movie is his epic showdown with the raccoon outside. Th that raccoon was amazing. Like seriously, like for a super, that raccoon was super himself. I am convinced that was Rocket. Like seriously, like that was Rocket. That's his origin story. Rocket came from the Incredibles universe and ended up going to Guardians of the Galaxy. It just only makes sense, right? Right? Now guys, uh, Pixar, explain to me one thing. What happened to Dash? You know what happened to Dash? Nothing. Dash was my favorite character in the first movie. Like, I guess because I love Flash so much, that's what he reminded me of. But in this sequel, it was like he was on timeout. He absolutely had no character development. Scratch that. He learned math. He learned math. He basically had the sidekick role in this movie. Now, I'm not forgetting our two favorite supporting characters of The Incredibles. The first one being Edna. She's still boss as ever and still making costumes. She ends up helping Mr. Incredible with understanding Jack-Jack's powers and even makes Jack-Jack a suit that will help manage his powers when they get out of control. And then we have my boy Frozone voiced by Samuel Jackson and still sounding as awesome as ever. And in this movie, they really showed off how OP overpowered Frozone is. He is seriously powerful. 
Except it seems like he only uses his powers to stop large objects from crashing into things. Now let's rate this movie. And here's the rating system Art told me to use. So starting with the best from the left, we have Awesome Must Watch, Damn Fine Movie, Good Dumb Fun, Watch When You're Bored, and Avoid At All Costs. Look, this is a Pixar movie. Name me one bad Pixar movie. Like seriously, drop it in the comments below. Tell me one bad Pixar movie. Seriously, there isn't one. I don't think there has been one bad thing Pixar has made. Like even the shorts are absolutely amazing. Incredibles 2 is a fun, action-packed family movie that teaches you that no matter what type of family you are, there are always going to be problems. But it is important to always love each other and stick together. Because a family that sticks together will always be stronger together. Oh, and Art, I know you're watching this. Dude, you need to go watch this before your kid is born. This movie is an accurate representation of how difficult it is to be a dad. That's gonna be you in a couple weeks. So obviously, I declare this movie an awesome must watch. Well, that's it for me today. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you're new here, join the Melee Mob by subscribing to this channel and ringing the bell so you can get notifications on our next video. You can also hit the info button on this video and check out what other people rated Incredibles too. You can also cast your vote there as well. Hey, and while I leave, we got more videos for you to check out, along with more movie reviews and even our mashups. And make sure you congratulate Art and Laura on their new baby in the comments down below. Trust me, he will read them and bawl his eyes out. I'm Journey and I don't really have a sign off.